He's got knee plan B like. Never mind plan B, he's got knee plan A like. That's one criticism we've heard quite a lot. Well, I've heard seen quite a lot on social media, a narrative that is becoming more and more common, that our manager in a season that has been difficult to say the least at times, particularly after the success of last year, that our manager does not have the tactical changes and the plan B to get us through. Now, I'm going to be talking on this video why that is one particular opinion I disagree with and I'd like to squash a little bit faster before it gets louder. If you're curious Newcastle fans, do us a little favour, make sure you stick around for a lovely little dollop of black and white banner. Welcome back to Black White Bat there, you lovely jubbly Newcastle fans. Thank you for watching wherever you might be watching or clicking from. Even if you're not meant to be here, you're meant to be watching a YouTuber with 50,000 subscribers on the Newcastle front. You stuck with me, so you may as well stick around to the end of the video. Uh, it's the international break, of course it is. I've been a little bit quieter getting the life in order, as we always do in international breaks. I've just been cleaning the house for about eight hours straight before I've dived on this video. But... What comes with the international break, as well as having to find a way of supporting Anthony Gordon and Bruno in the same match, which was tricky to say the least. Got it down the wing, Gordon makes it. Oh, what a tackle by Bruno! I forgot he was playing. Ah, sorry. Bruno, 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 Bruno. Oh, but there's Gordon, and I'm English. And 30, Gordon, running oh, down. But look at that pass by Bruno. Bruno, 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 and 30, Bruno, 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 Gordon, running down the wing, Gordon, half. And 30, Bruno, and 30, Bruno, running down the wing, Bruno. That was difficult, but... I did once own a pair of Adidas Sambas, so you could argue I'm maybe 130th, 140th Brazilian, so it's okay to support both teams. Oh, Anthony Gordon, he didn't half impress, did he? What comes at the international break, to get back to my first point, is a bit of reflection on the season. And I think it was needed for our players to go off to Dubai, get up to whatever they're doing, cocktail in hand, probably a bit of ping pong down by the seafront. Whatever they are doing, recovery this season feels like a key word that we need more of, almost like an injection into the arse. But you end up reflecting on things that maybe you don't get time to when it's game after game after game. Now, I'm not going to talk about the, the Eddie Howe in, Eddie Howe out debate that I only ever see as a debate on social media. It's not one I hear in away matches. It's not one I hear on buses. It's not one I hear in the pubs when I'm travelling down to your Blackburns and your, and your Man Cities and all that. But on social media, it seems to be quite a loud conversation. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Anyone who watches my stuff knows exactly how I feel about that. Most fans' expectations are only higher this year because of one man. Yes, that one man who they are criticising. Um, he's more than capable. He's proved that. But what I am seeing an opinion of, as I said at the start of this video, is that Eddie Howe does not have a plan B when the going gets tough, depending on opposition, depending if something isn't working. Hmm. I could do some music whilst I'm thinking. I'm going to disagree with that, and I'm going to talk exactly why on this video right now. So, let's cast our mind back to start. Let's go back to when Eddie Howe first came into this football club. Of course, relegation looked incredibly likely. He came into this job with an expectation that we thought of try and score lots of goals won't, won't be very good at defending at the other end. And that was a worry for some of us um, when we were fighting off relegation. Is Eddie Howe the right man? We didn't know at that point. Eddie Howe had been away studying his defensive side and what, how we set up in that first half of the season that he took over was a, more of a counter-attacking style. And I'll take you back just very quickly to that goal in injury time on Easter Bank on a Sunday, I believe it was, when Bruno uh, scored the header with pretty much the last kick against Leicester City. My God, what a day that was. His top came off. It was wonderful. That run by Joe Willock summed up our our games and our playing style that, that was so good in keeping us up. I think Eddie Howe knew, knew capabilities were limited a little bit in what he had and he didn't have time to put his stamp on the team. It had to be working from the get-go. And that's how we played. Now, let's fast forward into last season. We stayed up, it was great, and then the big signings came in. You know, 
the Rolls Royce defender came in at the back. Um, you know, it, it was here, there, and everywhere. Whether it was in the January window previously, and then the summer came, and the money was starting to get splashed from our new owners. And anyhow, finally got chance to put his proper stamp on the team. And what came with that was, I think, a confidence from him that the players were better to do so. He was starting to uh, sign who he wanted and put the cogs together to, 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 to work in this machine. And we set up in a 4-3-3, high intense style. I don't need to bore you with those details. We know how Eddie Howe likes to play. And it worked for most of the season. We'll never forget last season. It was one of my favourite support of this football club. But we did get to a patch in January, in February, just around that cup final, of course, at Wembley. Our first in 25 years where results were not going well. Teams were starting to figure out how we were playing. They were parking the bus at St. James's Park and we really, really struggled. So what did Eddie Howe do differently back then to see an an improvement in results that saw us qualify for the Champions League? Well, the first thing that he did back then was he changed Mr. Dan Byrne, who now, of course, splits opinion as we fast forward almost a season on. He changed Dan Byrne to allow him a bit more freedom in the final third and really pushed him on to overlap and support the attack a bit more. And I'll share a photo on the screen and I'll share some stats on the screen to prove that. And it started to work. We suddenly had another dimension to our attack that other teams were not expecting. Now, at the other end, sorry, not at the other end, but in, on the other side, on the attacking front, what we were set up as that we still are now was Trippier and Almiron down that right-hand side, overlapping each other, Sean Longstaff, who we haven't seen him do much of this this season, probably because he's getting injections in his foot, he would be imperative in supporting Almiron and Trippier and running into that space that defenders and midfielders did not know how to follow. Them three as a diamond worked an absolute peach, time after time after time. But again, that started to get found out. Teams were watching videos of us, doing the Optus stats and figuring out how to stop that. So what did Eddie Howe do there? Well, he made changes as the season went on where he allowed Mr. Alexander Izak to drop a bit deeper, it, almost to join the midfield, and asked our midfielders to push on and support him. So Alexander Izak almost became a playmaker and we overloaded the box a little bit more. And as the season went on, towards eight, late March, April, May, the really, really crucial time when we were really getting nervous about those Champions League places, It started to work. It really started to work. Eddie Howe has proved last season as well with his pressing style. We sometimes press in a 4-4-2 where Longstaff would move over to the right of midfield. For example, Jacob Murphy or Miron would then press next to Alexander Izak and that's how we would set up. We would switch that up time after time after time. Now, tactically, formation-wise, Eddie Howe did not need to change it much last season. It worked a treat. When the going got tough, he made those changes. But let's go into this season. Let's go into the season that makes this conversation most relevant. I'm not going to sit here on this video and talk about the suspension to, to Stav Sign and Sandro Tonali. The broken tour that's gone down in the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest broken tour recovery in history with £35 million Harvey Barnes. I'm not going to talk about the Champions League fixtures, but but what I am going to point out is as time has gone on, Eddie Howe this season, yes, did Eddie Howe decide that the 4-3-3 pressing style would work and stick with it through every single match? Champions League on a Tuesday, League on the Saturday, Champions League on a Wednesday, Carabao Cup on a Tuesday. Yes, with the with the injuries that we've had, was that a little bit silly to, to try and demand the players to keep playing that exact same way? I think in hindsight, yes, that's where Eddie Howe's made a mistake. But to say that this man has not got a plan B is very, very harsh in my opinion. And Do you want to know why? Because let's look at the changes he's made as this season has gone on to our team to try and mix it up. Let's go back to Nottingham Forest away. When the going was really, really getting tough, we just started to pick up some wins away from home, but generally speaking, our form had been terrible. We reverted to three at the back. Dan Byrne went in a little bit more narrow. Kieran Trippier then moved over to an inverted midfielder and that allowed Mr Bruno to push a little bit further forward. What did he do that day? He scored two goals. Now, that was a total change in our system that maybe at the time not so many people noticed from the stands. He tried it the following week. It didn't work so well. 
I actually commented at the time, I said I thought Bruno looked a little bit isolated and higher up. He wasn't able to get involved as much. But that was anyhow changing things to try and free up a player who we know is so imperative in everything we do good going forward and see whether he'd have a bit more bit more further up the pitch. And it didn't work. And then he ended up moving him back. And that's totally fine. Now let's go to Wolves. More recently, one of our only home wins more recently since since mid-December of last year. Eddie Howe set up totally different to anything we'd seen for a long time. Not in formation, and I'm going to keep repeating that because I think this plan B narrative is just talking about formation. What he did was he allowed Wolves to have so much of the football and he went back to the style that we saw when he first came into the club. We'll go a little bit narrow in and around our box. You try and break us down, Mr Wolves, and we will hit you on the counter at the right moments, we'll only press at particular moments, and we'll catch you out that way. And it worked. First goal, bang, Anthony Gordon away, flying, Bruno charging forward to support him. And that counter attacking style was not something we had seen for a very, very long time. Lots of fans called for him to use it the following week against Chelsea. I still disagree with that. We were just not at the races against Chelsea. They were fragile and our organised, disciplined, energetic pressing style would have worked. But let's go to Manchester City just last week in the Cup. The impossible football match. The game that every team has struggled in the last... What, year, two, three, four years? Pep Guardiola's quadruple winners. Eddie Howe, again, decided to mix things up completely. We saw a five at the back formation with Jacob Murphy, who we know can be quite handy at the other end of the pitch as part of a wing-back system. And for the large part, in my opinion, it worked. We saw Alexander Isaac and Anthony Gordon go a little bit more narrow to give their centre-backs maybe two problems rather than one. And yes, it was always going to be a difficult night, but if you break that football match down into how many clear-cut chances the best team on the planet created, if we'd had a bit more quality in the final third, that could have been different. But I could see exactly what Eddie Howe was trying to do. And my point here, Newcastle fans, across this last season and a half, is that Eddie Howe, compared to your average manager, and when I say average, I don't mean in terms of quality, I mean your run-of-the-mill Premier League manager, so let's go... The, the big boys, let's talk about Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, all of the ones that are in that, that category of class, they all generally have one system. Pep Guardiola might mix up personnel, he might play without a striker one week, but generally speaking, they all have one way of playing. Jurgen Klopp maybe dropped off that intense style in recent years, but you know you normally know what you are getting. Um, Liverpool's front three being a clear example of that with a midfield three, kind of similar to what Newcastle do. You will struggle to find many managers who are in that elite category who constantly chop and change formations and try different things and different players. Um, Dramatic changes in where players are playing. You might see a left-back player, right-back, and, you know, Jurgen Klopp's finally tried Trent in a midfield role here and there. But generally speaking, Eddie Howe, in in his time in charge, has made more tactical changes and just subtle changes to how players are playing and where they are playing, like I mentioned with Dan Byrne pushing forward a little bit, than I've seen in most of my lifetime supporting Newcastle. Eddie Howe is a man who knew he was not a good defensive coach when he took his time off after Bournemouth, so he went away to Athletic Home and did to study how to become better at that. Yes, and I know you're going to ram down my throat, well, well... We've conceded a ridiculous amount of goals this season. This season, to me, has that feel of let's get to the summer and press that reset. But one argument I will not allow to be said to me in a conversation if I'm having a cheeky pint in the pub is that he does not have a plan B. Has Eddie Howe made mistakes this season? Yes. Has he made substitutions that I have questioned? Yes. Did he try and stick to a high intense 4-3-3 system for too long where the fixtures and our lack of options to bring off the bench would not allow that to continue? Yes, I believe he has. But what manager out there does not make mistakes? And if there is one person I have faith in to keep evolving and learning from mistakes, it is Eddie Howe. Plan B, plan A, he has a style of play that he likes, we know exactly what that is and he will probably continue to do that. Don't forget that playing style, with the right players available to him, was capable of getting a cup final and a Champions League with, with what, six players from the from the, the Ashley days in that side? I just think 
Our expectations are through the roof because of one man and one man only. That one man is now trying to work, probably is already thinking about the summer and next season on getting back to exactly those standards. We are missing Joe Linton in midfield, the absolute brick Shit house, pardon the French, that we know Joe Linton is. We have not looked right with players like Botman, who we now found out has got an ACL injury, and that's why he's looked so out of sorts. Nick Pope, whether you like it or not, is a better goalkeeper than Martin Dubravka. Not with his feet, but with the most important thing, and that is keeping the ball out of the back of the net. Let's just take a breath. Let's see what, how we do in these last 10 matches. There is still so much to play for with them European places in mind. But next time someone says to you, Eddie Howe does not have a plan B, never mind the plan A, I just feel like Eddie Howe is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. And you might want to take a look back and have a little look at how many changes he's made in what is, generally speaking, quite a short spell at Newcastle so far. Let me know your thoughts down below, Newcastle fans. I'm curious to see what you think on this. And as always, keep the faith and try and enjoy the rest of the international break. Thanks for watching. Hope you the lads!